should you test the snowpack for instability? Answers to this question range from never to yes before you ride every slope. In this video, Doug Chabot and I give our thoughts on the situations in which we think testing the instability of the snowpack is a good idea. First, let's look at two short clips of an instability test called the extended column test, which is often called an ECT. Tests like the ECT have often been called stability tests or snowpack tests, but instability test is a better name because they should be used to search for instability rather than as a sign of stability. In the second half of this video, Doug will demonstrate and explain more about the extended column test. Note that in this video, we're not talking about digging pits and recording layers. We're talking about the situations in which we think testing the snowpack for instability is worthwhile. Trip planning is key to having a low risk day in the mountains. Trip planning involves everyone in your travel group agreeing on a couple of routes based on the public bulletin, available observations, and knowledge of the terrain. If you'll be riding in an area without a public bulletin, then supplementing backcountry observations with instability tests becomes more important. While in the backcountry, you should observe, observe, observe. There will be a few decision points in your day, like the one shown in this photo. At each decision point, you should recall your trip plan and interpret all available observations. Then make your decisions as a group. As a friend who instructs avalanche courses in Colorado says, you've chosen to travel together, so you should decide together. It's fine to turn around or choose a lower risk route. The question is, should you supplement your observations with snowpack instability tests? One good reason for instability tests is you're interested in learning how the local snowpack relates to the Bolton. Remember that the Bolton applies better to the entire region than to the smaller area of your trip. Another reason for instability tests is you want more information before entering or descending serious terrain. And by serious terrain, we mean any slope big enough or steep enough, which under the worst snowpack conditions, could produce an avalanche that could bury or kill a person. We consider slopes that are bigger than this one, steeper than this one, or located above a terrain trap to be serious avalanche terrain. We also consider terrain rated as challenging or complex in Canada to be serious. If neither of these motivations apply to you, then stick with a less steep and cautious route on your trip plan Observe, decide, and travel together. So, your group has decided to dig, either because you want to learn how the local snowpack relates to the Bolton, or because you're approaching a serious slope along your route. Here's the kicker. In the context of recreational decisions, snowpack tests are poor indicators of stability. If you think a particular result from an instability test will tell you the slope is stable, forget it. Snowpack tests sometimes give false indications of stability and the consequence can be your life. If the test indicates instability, then you should avoid nearby serious avalanche slopes. This may mean turning around or switching to the more cautious route in your trip plan. An instability test should never convince you an avalanche slope is stable. Whoops, have Doug and I missed something? What if you're not trained in how to do the ECT or other instability test? First, in the next few minutes, Doug is going to demonstrate the ECT and explain how to interpret it. That is a start on training. Second, if you're strictly using instability tests to avoid more serious slopes, then errors in site selection or test technique are unlikely to increase the severity of the consequences. Every time you dig and test, you'll be learning about the snowpack and how it relates to the Bolton. Okay, over to Doug. Before we commit to skiing or riding a slope, 
we want to put our shovel in the snow and we want to hunt for instability. We want to find out, can I initiate a fracture on the slope? And can that fracture then propagate and create an avalanche? We're going to talk about the extended column test here because that test does both. We'll be able to look for initiation and also measure propagation. Before I commit to riding or skiing a slope, I want to dig a snow pit in order to do stability tests. Now, I want to dig in an area that is representative of where I'm going to be skiing and riding, meaning it has a similar aspect, similar elevation, because that also means it's going to have a similar snowpack. We don't want to dig in avalanche terrain. We can dig on something less than 30 degrees and those, the, the test results we get are going to be applicable to an adjacent slope. So once I find an area that I like, and the area should be relatively open, should be open to the sky, um, should not be rock bands through it, uh, or too close to the trees. There shouldn't be able to get like little snowballs falling off the tree onto the slope where I'm going to dig. We want it uniform and relatively clean. Then when we dig, we want to dig down past our layer of concern. Now if you were reading an avalanche advisory or a bulletin, typically will tell you where that, that layer is. Um, and it's the weak layer we're most concerned with down here. It's at this interface. So we want to dig below that and then we're going to test the snow above it. In order to trigger an avalanche, we need a few things. We have to initiate a fracture on a weak layer, and then that fracture has to propagate. The extended column test is a good test for showing us whether or not we can initiate it, and then if the weak layer will actually propagate where it wants to kind of move and potentially avalanche. So an extended column test is a, is a block test. We're going to isolate a block of snow on my snow saw it measures 30 centimeters so we want it 30 centimeters deep by 90 centimeters wide and it's easy to just use two probes yours and your partners and the goal here is we're gonna isolate a block of snow on all four sides. So once I've got that in, I then we'll take my string parachute cord, loop it around, and then saw. And I'm going below that weak layer. Once I've cut the block with my string, I like taking my saw and just really isolating those sides, making sure everything is completely free. Because we don't want the block binding up at all. And now we're ready to tap. Now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna load this column with taps. I'm gonna do 10 taps from the wrist very gently. If it doesn't break, I'm gonna do 10 from the elbow, and then I'll do 10 from the shoulder. One. Then I'm going to do 10 from the elbow, and what I'm doing here is I just let my arm kind of fall right from hinging right from the elbow. Ooh, ECTP 11, propagated across. If it had not done that, I would have kept going all the way to 20. Then I would do 10 big hits from the shoulder to see if I could get it to go. Having this break at ECTP 11, that means it propagated it on 11, means that we initiated the fracture and then that weak layer wanted to break or it did break all the way across the block. 
this is a sign of instability. When we say we're hunting for instability, when we're trying to find out if things are unstable, this is what we're looking for. And in this instance, the answer is yes, this slope is unstable. Slopes at a similar aspect, similar elevation, I would expect would also be unstable like this. If we're getting ECTNs where it's initiating uh, but it's not propagating, or an ECTX where we're nothing, we hit it 30 times, nothing happens. If we're expecting a weak layer, if we were expecting to see some sort of break and we didn't get it, you want to dig a second pit. You want to maybe move uphill a little bit, 20 feet or so, go off to another little slope, do another one because that will help you determine if maybe the weak layer isn't where you are or maybe you were just happen to be digging in a stable spot. Remember, we're always hunting for instability. When doing an extended column test, there are three types of results. ECTX means you did all of the tapping and no cracks initiated in any weak layer. Here's a clip of Doug doing the last six taps of an ECTX. ECTN means a crack initiated or started in a weak layer, but did not propagate across the column. Here is a clip of Doug getting an ECTN on the 17th tap. The third type of result is an ECTP. When a crack initiates in a weak layer and propagates quickly across the column as a result of the same tap. You saw two ECTPs at the start of the video and a longer clip of Doug getting an ECTP. Now let's look at situations in which we often don't do instability tests. First, the instability might be obvious, either from the bulletin or observations. If we see recent avalanches or shooting cracks or are feeling wumps, we select a cautious route that avoids any slope that can produce an avalanche big enough to bury or kill a person. Second, in the spring, when the upper snowpack is melted and refrozen many times, we want to plan and manage our day so we're descending where and when less than an inch of surface snow has softened, as shown in this photo. This means an early start. This photo shows a wet avalanche that occurred at midday. My friends and I should have descended earlier when less than an inch of snow had softened. Third, all the slopes along the route may not be big enough or steep enough to produce avalanches. Maybe you're riding with your kids, avoiding any slopes big enough and steep enough to produce an avalanche that could bury or kill a person. Nevertheless, even when on such cautious routes, we sometimes dig to test the snowpack for instability. It helps us learn about the snowpack and relate local instability to the regional bulletin. This is especially valuable when we're returning to the same area in the next day or two. Summing up, the trip plan that you make with your group should normally include two routes, one of which cautiously avoids serious avalanche slopes. Recognize that snowpack tests, like the extended column test, can only indicate instability. If any of your tests indicate instability, then avoid serious avalanche slopes. This may mean turning around or switching to the more cautious route in your trip plan. You've chosen to travel together, so you should decide together at each decision point. We welcome your comments on the ideas in this video.